Hello, my name's Adam Lerner, and we're now have a little quick look at objects, their origins, and data blocks in Blender. Now, today we'll start just by looking at the monkey first, which is called Suzanne, as we can see in the outliner or in its object data properties panel. Push tab to enter edit mode, we can push P and separate by loose parts. And as we can see now, we've actually got two extra objects. That is because Suzanne is actually made of three separate mesh objects in one single object, all being joined together. Now we will name these objects appropriately for good practice, so we'll call this I left and I right. And if we now transform the monkey, grabbing it, rotating it, or scaling it, you can see that the eyes do not follow the transformation of the monkey itself. What is often done is simply parenting one object to another. So if I select both of these eyes, then select the monkey last, the objects selected will be parented to the last object which was selected. Everything is now going to be parented to the monkey. So now when I move the monkey, rotate, grab, and scale, it follows along the same transformations. This is handy for animations and other arrays or modifications where you want the children to follow the parent. Now if we look at this outline again, you can no longer see the other two objects. If we select them, you can see the little mesh icon. That indicates that it's a mesh. If I add a curve, you can see that it's got a curve icon, so you can see it's a curve type. I'll delete that again. If we wanted to actually look at the data blocks of the object, We'd have to click this little plus here and we can see the two eyes inside the outliner. So now what we can do, if we scaled Suzanne up twice and then we cleared the parent, which is sometimes done because we want to change the order of the operations. You can see that the eye now shrunk back to its original position. This is because the order in which operations are done, the children follow the parent operation. So if I wanted, for example, the eye to actually keep its transformation, we'd have to push Control A and apply the scale or the transformations to the parent object and then clear the parenting. And you can see that it stays the same relative size and its relative position. Another thing we can look at quickly is we add two more objects. If we transform all three objects, they are transforming around the very center. That is because it's the mean point of the origins. So if I select these two, it's transforming around the center of the two object origins. If I rotate one object, it's rotating around its origin. If I move this object off center, it is now rotating around its origin. And if I wanted to change the location, I could push Alt, Control, Shift and C and put the origin to its geometry. So it's now in the middle point of its geometry. Or I could put the cursor to a point, Alt, Control, Shift, C, and I want the origin now to its cursor location. I can also change the actual data type held inside of the origin. So if I wanted to change this sphere, I could turn it to Suzanne. Or I can change this cube to the sphere. I can change the I to Suzanne. As you may have seen there, my data blocks were a bit messy. This is because I had a trial run of this recording just before I done this one, and I didn't refresh by going File, New, Inside Blender. So all of these data blocks of the previous objects I used are still here, although they're not actually in the outliner itself. I can still access them. So you can access objects you've erased as long as you haven't exited and reopened it. Because if I went to save as, and I save this, and then I reopened it, and I look down here, all of the data blocks of unused objects have now disappeared. The zero there means zero objects are currently in use of it. It has an F next to it, that means it will be saved regardless of whether it's in use or not. If I wanted to keep a data block of an object which is no longer in use, I could click F and that will um, save the data block. So you can click to save data of objects even though they're not in use. I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.